in this week's episode. We're walking on ice. There's a few slip ups. <laughs> oh dear. And we go to extremes to try and get our second hand 300 kilo stove into the boat. Hi, we're Jack, Gabby, and this is Tilly. We've lived on the water for three years and we love this lifestyle. For us, it's about living slowly with intention. We are now taking on a new challenge. We've bought a sail away, a narrowboat shell, and we're turning this into a fully solar powered, off grid eco home. Join us for the journey. Winter on the canal can be absolutely stunning. We've had our first real cold snap and it's just gorgeous out here. The whole canal is frozen. A good couple of inches is just solid ice. bad, but my feet are frozen. I don't know what it is, how many wear pairs of socks I've got to wear to get warm feet. Bed socks and one pair of socks is not the answer. I could watch the birds hop around on here all day. But, there's work to be done. Oh dear. <laughs> You've got snow all over your hand now as well. just want to show you what we're currently trying to deal with. So we want to lay the floor today in, in our joke, but we have filled the boat with every single thing that we picked up second hand, apart from the wood burner itself, and we cannot move. This is where we're starting today. Stuff everywhere. And this is where we are now. So we've moved everything to the far end of the boat. So we've got some clear space up here. So this afternoon, we are now going to crack on with the flooring. So we will see you tomorrow. Oh my goodness. This morning is just absolutely gorgeous. The canal's frozen over. The whole towpath is frozen, but the sun is shining. It's beautiful. I'm just taking Tilly for a morning walk. Morning walk and morning walk. You need to be more of a morning person. You need to get up earlier and enjoy these moments. Today, Jack is going to clean out the stove that we had delivered. So because it's second hand, it's all quite, oh, it's 12 years old second hand, so it's quite um, dirty inside. So I'm just going to clean that all up before we put it into the boat, which is another day's challenge. Um, and today I am going to edit our videos for YouTube. So yeah, I can sit in the warm all day. <laughs> row of boats with our chimney going. Bit of warmth at the end of the walk. So lovely. Mm. 
the beast, as we've come to call her, has been sitting out here on the towpath for the last few days whilst we try and build up the strength and the energy to work out what we're going to do with her and how we're going to get her into that boat. I think what I'm going to try and do now is um, try and take even more of the weight off of her because we've still got these great big like, Arga lids. So hopefully I can get in there with a screwdriver, get these off, maybe take the side bits off and see if we can strip it down even more to make it a bit of an easier job to get her in the boat. See little bits like this. Don't weigh much, but every little helps, right? I don't want to move. Thing is, I think all the bolts are in uh, Imperial. All of my stuff is metric. I have to buy more tools. This little guy has been getting more and more confident with me around. I have seen someone feed a robin out of their hand. If you know how to build up their trust enough to do this, then let me know how in the comments. I've tried to get these off, WD-40 did it, all my tools are the wrong size. So I'm going to throw in the towel and instead just try and give it a good clean. And then me a good clean afterwards, using the world's smallest wire brush. It's probably like 20 years worth of dirt and grime that's built up in this thing. Enjoying yourself? Oh, I'm having a whale of a time. I love buying reclaimed stuff and then having to spend what you think is going to be, you know, just a couple of hours bringing it back to its former glory. Three years later, there you still are with a rusty old stove outside your rusty old boat <laughs> with a lot of flooring that's still not in. Is that a bit of pessimist? No, it's not pessimistic. It's not pessimistic. It's realistic. It's not realistic. This will be in and it'll look beautiful because you look at it now, you look at it, it's so, it's so beautiful, but it just needs a bit of TLC and you give it that bit of TLC and it is going to be the iron heart of the boat. <laughs> See what you did there. Yeah. That is an awful joke, but just to explain, the model of the stove is an iron heart. For the next few days, we tried to think about how we were going to tackle getting this stove into the boat. The original plan was a few muscly helpers and maybe a winch, but then we found something else to help carry the load. Today is a very exciting day. We've been a bit on edge because we're waiting for a man to turn up who didn't really give us an arrival time, but he is due imminently. We've basically, we've hired a man and a crane to get our stove into the new boat. We've been umming and ahhing about it for weeks of how to do it. So we've decided this is the safest and most sensible way. The crane has been delivered. The guy's just moving his car to go park up and see to come and move it to the, to the boat. But he is very confident we're gonna get this stove in. More confident than I am. We were looking to hire just the crane ourselves, but it turns out you need a license to operate them, which is probably quite sensible. I just want to say here that we did pat this mud back down again, so no lasting damage was done to the towpath. This nifty machine is called a spider crane because its legs all open out like a spider. I sent Ed, the crane man, a load of measurements before he agreed to come and help us but I didn't think to check the width of the towpath and now he is struggling to get the legs extended out enough. So we're moving the crane and we are trying again. Ed's happy, time to secure the stove. Ah, not quite. Do you need to hold it? Now it's in the air, Ed needs to lift it over the railings on the stern of the boat before we can lower it and guide it through the back door. And it's getting dark. I'm on the stern ready to grab the legs to pull it into position and Jack's racing inside the boat to then pull it in. 
We get the stove into position to fit through the doors, but quickly realise it's going to be too tall to squidge in. No matter how much jiggling we did, surprisingly, this 300 kilo stove would not slip through. Taking the legs off the stove should give us enough space to be able to tilt it into the boat. With the legs off, we lower it a smidge and manage to get it through the doors. Sorry about the light, but we had our hands tied. Having the stove inside the boat is just the best feeling. Okay, so this might have seemed like extreme measures, but with Ed on his way and the stove inside the boat with no broken backs, the stove not at the bottom of the canal, and no sinking boat, we're counting this as a success. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed the video as it really helps support the channel. Join us next week as we continue the build of our off-grid floating home.